Hi, so this is a quick video on the Scares and Sparks prop controller board. Now the prop controller board is basically running uh, an Arduino Nano and I was finding I was using these for lots of different props and I found I was always using a power supply board with it and I was always using an audio player board and I was always adding a MOSFET controller and I thought I may as well just do an absolutely standard simple board just to hold all of these things makes soldering so much easier makes it so much more reliable um, so I just want to talk today about basically the schematic and the PCB for the controller board um, these are all fully available download as you like order them as you like it, there's really no IP in this thing it's not worth me trying to even trying to keep it uh, but I just want to explain a little bit about how they work and some of the changes and things I've made so this is being shown in Altium however the circuit diagram and the board can both be loaded up into the Altium free tool that's available called circuit maker uh, it's very very similar to use it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that Altium has uh, but honestly for hobby work you really don't need them so what you've got within the schematic these are the basic parts you've got the Arduino Nano I've got a DC to DC power supply I've got the audio player I've got some MOSFETs end channel MOSFETs for switching loads and then I have a bunch of different connectors all over the board and you can see that they've been labeled um, hopefully with sensible names so that uh, the servo one the actual connector is called SV1 so when you see it on a PCB it's obvious that that's where the servo connector is much easier than my first design of this which called everything you know J1 J2 J3 J4 and then you had to cross reference them all the time so what have we got so here's the Arduino Nano I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit uh, you see that it's got basic pinouts already assigned to it they're not in a line because I think it's just easy to see the groupings if you break them out there's a few pins that aren't used on the thing two reset pins for example and then this particular uh, design also has uh, pins for the mounting holes of the Arduino which we don't use in this application you'll see that most pins are used a handful of the analog pins aren't so they're just brought out to plain test points uh, and there's also a couple of pins here which are shared with the internal serial port so although they could be used as test points they're a bit of a pig to use so we just put them separately what else you got you got a couple of ground pins you got a 3.3 volt that's generated on the nano itself and is used to power the uh, audio player so if I just um, highlight the the net it's not gonna let me do it there we go only place it goes is from the nano to the audio player and then there's a capacitor as well uh, somewhere I've got 47 microfarads and 25 volts it really doesn't have to be that sort of level of voltage on a 3.3 volt it could be a, a 6.3 volt a 10 volt a 15 volt whatever you've got laying around basically that can fit in the holes on the board and it's just to give it a little bit of um, stability really in the voltage trail because when this thing starts playing particularly driving a, a speaker that's fairly low impedance um, you know you're going to see some current spikes coming from here so an extra capacitor is going to keep the thing more reliable and not keep crashing uh, what else have we got on here you will also see um, various different resistor positions so anything with a value this is a zero ohm or a 1k ohm these are going to be fitted as standard on most of the designs ones that are there which you may or may not need for various reasons are declared as DNI do not insert sometimes you also see these in schematics as DNF do not fit or sometimes NF no fit and I've seen all sorts of other naming conventions as well but they basically relate to having a site on a PCB you don't necessarily want to put stuff on but you might later so you may as well put it on there just in case 
Now I mentioned the power supply. The way that this one I've got wired up, this is a little DC-DC module. It takes in 12 volts, it spits out 5 volts. And that 5 volts by default goes to the potentiometer positions, it goes to um, the PIR, so it powers the PIRs, it powers the servos as well, if you've got servos, and also if you're using relays, it can power the relay coils too. So if you had them all together and you had some fairly beefy servos, you're probably talking quite a reasonable amount of current coming out of the thing. So that's why we're using a separate power supply as opposed to using the one that's built into the Arduino. Now you could potentially use the one that's built into the Arduino. If you didn't fit this, instead you fitted a zero ohm here, you would effectively be supplying this via its V in. This would produce both 5 volts and 3.3, and this 5 volt output could then be used to power all these other things. So you wouldn't need this device. And if you're using, if you're doing this with just a real low power setup, maybe you're only driving a PIR or something like that, then that's probably good enough. You can just get rid of this thing. I've just wanted to make the thing as flexible as possible. Of course, the issue with making things flexible means it can also be a bit confusing. So what else have we got? Let's look at some of the connectors. These two allow us to put potentiometers on. So if you wanted to adjust some, say the speed of a strobe, say you were building a strobe unit, you would solder on a header here, connect your potenti potentiometer, and this little pin here connects to A3 on the Arduino. And you can use that then in your code to look at the analog voltage and, move, and make your strobe a different speed, for example. On the audio player itself, you've got two separate connectors. The main speaker driver is used on these two pins, just pins one and three. You can put a speaker directly across those and that's the loudest way of doing it. You could also put two separate speakers and power them to ground. Wouldn't necessarily advise it, but there's a way of doing it. And if you wanted to know about how this thing works, you know, do a search on the DF Player Mini. You will find data sheets. You will find all of the information you need to hook this up. If you only want high level, line level audio, so something to go into an amplifier, for example, you'd use this connector instead. And I do actually do that on my zombie grabber because the mechanism is very noisy. I needed to add an extra amplifier. So rather than using the speaker outputs, I use these two line level outputs on this connector and drove a separate amplifier. What else we got? We mentioned MOSFETs briefly. So this can trigger three different MOSFETs. They all get powered from the 12 volt line coming in. The V in line that we saw goes right the way up into this power supply over here. Um, and these are basically allowing high side control. So one side goes into this power, goes off to your whatever it is, motor, light, whatever it could be. Then the other side hits this MOSFET. Basic operation here is the MOSFET is being used as a switch. If this line coming in is zero volts, low voltage, this MOSFET will not turn on. This is The MOSFET is a, a voltage controlled current, basically. Uh, so this will look completely disconnected here and nothing will flow through here. If now we make this one 3.3 or 5 volts, this MOSFET will be turned on hard and effectively these two pins here will be shorted together, grounded if you like. So then you can have power flowing through here, through your load, through the MOSFET and back to ground. So you're turning your device on. Now if you're turning standard lights on and off at 12 volts, this is absolutely fine. Don't need to take any other precautions. One precaution though, if you're switching a DC motor, so you've got this line going to a motor and this line coming back from the motor, make sure you put a reverse bias diode across the motor. If you don't, when you turn the MOSFET off, the motor's still spinning. It generates something called a back EMF, which means a, a potentially large voltage could be coming out on this pin, going into this MOSFET, and depending on which MOSFET you've got, could kill the MOSFET in what could be quite a spectacular way, depending on which part you've picked. 
these are pretty beefy MOSFETs, so d there's some margin for error in that. But anyway, always put your reverse um, protection diode on for this sort of stuff. Uh, we've got, I mentioned before, a couple of connectors here for the PIR. One is the actual PIR trigger. One I use as a mode. You could use it with two PIRs. Up to you how you write your code. Um, some of my applications use multiple servos. This thing supports three servos by default. Um, the, you'll notice that even though these are all three pin connectors, they do all have subtly different pinouts on them. Um, a servo connector is a very standard pinout. This one is one that matches again what comes out of a PIR, so you can use a straight cable. Um, and then finally, the last one is a relay one. This allows us to just control the coils only of a couple of relays. And those would allow you then to switch things like mains voltages. Um, and most of the little mini relay boards you've got already got switching on. So all you're doing is providing a simple logic control and a power and the little mini relay board will sort things out. So you're probably thinking, well, that looks kind of weird. Where do you put the power in? When you put the power in over here, two big fat test points for power in, two more for ground. Um, those are the two basic requirements to put in. Um, and then the rest of it, you just build up as you want. So you're probably thinking, what does it look like in real life? Because this just looks like, you know, a gobbledygook schematic. So in real life, the board looks like this. So this is viewing it in a, in a plain two dimensional view. Um, and what you can see here is things like the V in. So these are the two big power input test points. This is our little power regulator, our DC DC. You see these are the pins for that. And then the MOSFETs all go in a row here. One, two, and three. These are the transistor positions. And you can see the tracking. So here's the V in, and it only goes to the MOSFETs, and then it branches off via a resistor, and then ends up on the actual power of the Arduino, which sits in the center here. Um, and similarly, you'll see the other sort of connectors laying around. So the two pot potentiometer connectors are up here. They just track straight into these analog pins. The relay connectors down here, track in here. And then over here you have, this guy here is actually the, the audio playing board with the speaker outputs, the DAC outputs, and down here you've got your servos and then the big round ones dotted around are capacitor sites you don't need them all fitted if you're not using the functions so if you weren't using an audio player you know you wouldn't fit the audio player you wouldn't fit the headers you wouldn't fit the capacitor for it don't really need it now one great thing about Altium and circuit maker is I can just jump straight into 3d mode I've got 3d models of everything in this design apart from the headers I've left them off because um, they kind of clutter what I'm trying to do. You can see there's the Arduino in the middle. Here's our audio player with its micro SD card. Here's our DC DC power supply. Capacitors, MOSFETs. And the MOSFETs look, they haven't even got any pins on, they just sort of sit in midair. But it doesn't matter, it gives us an idea of how big things are going to be and where they're going to be. And if I turn the board over, then you can actually see. Um, oh, sorry, wrong button. Um, the other little parts on the back and you can also make out all the tracking as well so it makes it nice and easy to see and some of these are the standard resistors that you're going to need and some of them are the ones that we called DNI do not insert they're shown here just because it's just easier for my models to do so um, but you won't necessarily have those on yours so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a rundown of the schematic board and the board and um, you can make these things for literally a couple of dollars each using the PCB way service uh, very very cheap good quality boards as well for what they are and once you've soldered one of these up which I've got covered in another video um, you know you won't go back to sort of building things with random bits of wire string all over the place uh, it just makes life much much easier